Hi, my name is Sam Baker. I'm a doctoral student at the University of Minnesota, and I will be your tenor at Minnesota Varsity. Uh, the general range of a tenor is we can usually hit a low, um, like at the middle C on the piano, fairly easily, and uh, no, that's the C below middle C, excuse me, and we can go full voice. Um, your typical tenor can hit about a G or a high A even. This is uh, an octave and a sixth above the low C of our range. It's the, on our treble clef, we would be written as the first ledger line above the staff, that particular A. Uh, for extended range, um, many tenors can sing as low as low A flats, sing down there with the, the baritones, and can sing uh, as high as uh, like a high C in full voice. Uh, we can get into falsetto later with uh, extended ranges if you like. Ah, so that would be like a high A. Most tenors can hit that full voice, no problem with full, with a good vibrato coming in to get a good high volume sound. Uh, typically, when you're getting into the upper ranges of the voice, you want either a higher volume or you want the option of flipping into falsetto. Naturally, the idea of tessitura is being comfortable in a certain range. You don't want as a tenor, I don't want to sing high A's all the time, or I don't want to sing low C's all the time. It will uh, hamper my throat, make me press, and it gets really draining and very tiring very quickly. Uh, it's like asking a violinist to play super high notes all the time, and with vibrato, their arms will be all sore after that one. Uh, so the tessitura is the comfortable range of the voice. Most tenors would be comfortable singing like a G, so this is the G below middle C, up to about a D above middle C, so that's about a range of a fifth is usually the comfortable range of a tessitura tenor. You can go above it and below it as you like, uh, but the average range, of course, is going to be the G to the D. Danza, danza, fan chul al mio cantar, danza, danza, al mio cantare. So that ends at a low note, but it pretty much stays within the fifth throughout most of the song. In fact, it doesn't really matter what key we're singing in, Although there are some keys that are good for some voices and some keys that are not as good for some voices. Uh, as a tenor, I like to sing in the key of D because the, the low note is right there above my low range. The high note is it's still comfortably in my tessitura with an upper extension if I want to. I like the key of D. Um, I like the key of F and G. Those notes are all very easy to read, very few accidentals for me to uh, look at and get confused by. Uh, anything that has a double sharp or double flats in the key signature, not in the key signature, but uh, on the page itself. Uh, those might be a little harder for some singers to read, although if you're uh, singing uh, by ear and hearing the key signature correctly and it's tonal, uh, we're usually able to figure it out just fine, especially after a first try. Uh, some of the strengths of a tenor include singing uh, rhythmically, as opposed to the basses. When you're in the lower registers of your voice, it's harder to hear uh, rhythmic accuracy so uh, as a tenor or a higher voice, we can have more rhythmic capacity than the basses do. We are good at singing fast, singing loud, singing quiet. I can't say I'd be a tenor if uh, I didn't love singing loud high notes. That's, I guess, the, the bread and butter of the tenors. We all have our money note. Uh, mine varies between high A flat, A natural, sometimes B flats. Uh, I've hit high C's, but I don't really feel comfortable doing that without a full orchestra behind me uh, in that regard. It's very hard to do it alone by yourself on stage and be very accurate in the pitch. So, you know, the money notes, the A-flats. Shine forth as the sun in the heavenly realms. Something like that. We love holding those notes for a long time, so anytime I see a high A flat with a fermata on it, I'm going to smile. <laughs> and uh, some of the weaknesses, I suppose, would be uh, anything involving the passaggio. That's the passing area of the voice. For tenors, it sticks around an F natural. This is the F natural above middle C. For tenors, we can sing passaggio notes loud or falsetto. There is very little room for in between there. There's like a physical shift that happens in us in there. So I will go through the passaggio from a D all the way up to an A, <clears throat> and I'll sing a, a major scale there. 
So the difference between the D and the high A natural is very striking. The sound is completely different. And uh, it's very important to keep this in mind when we're switching between the upper and lower registers of our voice. Um, one of the weaknesses of the tenor is getting volume in the lower register of our voice. So if we're singing down in that C, C to E area below middle C, we're going to be low in our voice, singing very breathy. Uh, if I wanted any more volume there, it's like... Uh, and that's about all I can produce uh, compared to the high A, which is very loud, very piercing, very striking. Uh, some of the extended techniques of the singer include uh, things like unvoiced noises, such as shh and sss, and we can uh, make any sound that you desire and can produce on your own. You can notate it. Uh, what we, we just use a X on the staff with the rhythm indicated rather than a, a notated regular note. Uh, so we can hold shh, and with those notations we can do any dynamic levels you want. We can do crescendos, decrescendos. Uh, it's all it is is breath support and uh, mouth shape. It's uh, just like I don't know covering the end of your tuba to create a a particular noise, and that's uh, one of the extended techniques that uh, tenors can do. The other noticeable one that's unique to ma male voices is falsetto. We can just sing way up in the stratosphere, above our recommended range, which I've already listed to you. Uh, most tenors can probably sing up to the soprano F, which is the F an octave above middle C, uh, an octave and a fourth above middle C, and uh, the da 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 and if we're going to stay just in falsetto, it uh, cuts out around maybe a D above middle C, so just that one note above middle C. That's where it usually cuts off in falsetto. Uh, to notate falsetto, all you would have to do is write falsetto in the score, and then naturale, N-A-T-U-R-A-L-E, the Italian version, to um, point out that we should go back into our regular voice, so natural versus falsetto. Um, Sprechstimme is a technique that was uh, developed in the, the recent past. So yeah, it man. was where the pitches were given, but they were mere suggestions, mere guidelines as to what actual <clears throat> sound the singer was meant to produce. So you could have something like, I'm singing in Sprechstimme. I'm elongating my vowels, but I'm not really singing. So you could have suggested pitches there, and we'll follow the flow of the text. And um, you can put in stylistic information, like creepily or spookily, if you're going for like a, a scary dark sound in the distance. You can just put those words for a des uh, desired effect you want, or you can uh, specifically ask the singer to do a very literal uh, method of technique you want them to do. Uh, for percussion, uh, vocalists can produce percussion effects. We, most vocalists, I know some people who can't, but most can snap, most can clap, most can dance, stomp their foots. One of the wonderful things about being a singer is we don't have to hold an instrument. Our hands are free to do anything you want with. We singers are treated more like instruments than they are like singers. The, the biggest difference between the two is that singers don't have buttons we can press to make noises. We have to hear the note in our head and then produce the note using our vocal mechanism, which is inside our bodies. We can't see them, we can't manipulate them by sight or by touch. Uh, we actually don't have any nerve endings in the larynx, so we can't even feel what we're doing. We just have to trust that we're doing the right thing. If you are, for example, um, we're singing in happy E major land, and the uh, string instruments you have accompanying us start playing in a different key, and we have to come in suddenly, out of nowhere, on a completely different key, and it's very difficult to find our starting note. That's something a singer would get frustrated with very quickly. So it could be helpful to have, uh, I've seen good examples have like a, like a piano held note at the end of a passage, and that can be one of the singer's starting notes. 
and from there we can find our own pitches. We could have like a held B, B natural, and we could all come in very easily on an E major chord as the, the, the B would be the fifth of the chord. And there are some songs which do not have text. You could look, look for, uh, I believe it's by Mendelssohn, but songs without words. He just has, uh, it's usually a soprano singing on an ah through the whole way, just pure melody. Uh, you can use that to help gauge when to give singers breaths. That's a great example on that. You can use it to study up on melody if you like. Those are great pieces to listen to. So in terms of breaths, uh, pianists usually take stylistic breaths since they don't need to breathe to play their instrument. They just need to breathe to stay alive. They can play notes, play notes, play notes, and then stop and then take an artistic breath where they clear out all the sound and then come back in in a new movement. Uh, singers can do this too, but we also need to breathe regularly, just like uh, any wind instrument, to make our music correctly. Uh, I would recommend this for any composer and any instrument, uh, as well as singing, but it's very important as a composer to be able to sing through each line individually. Uh, it's important for you to gauge when you would breathe naturally with the text, uh, whether you'd be forced to breathe in the middle of a word or not, or at the end of long notes, stuff like that. It's a very good practice to sing through your lines yourself. Uh, it's uh, been a pleasure demonstrating for you. I uh, hope you understand the tenor voice a little better now, and I'm looking forward to singing your music. Thanks.